Okay, so we've got a Cornish tin mine today. This is Wheelcoats near St Agnes in Cornwall. And we're going to have a go at painting that. <laughs> so I've drawn out the scene. I'll pop up the photograph as a screenshot for you and a pop up of the drawing so you can have a closer look at those as well. I'm going to come straight in. I'm going to go straight onto the sky. So I'm coming right the way down to the sea line or the horizon line and I'm going to come round the tin mine. Plenty of water, it's a nice cotton paper so it'll hold plenty of water. Picking up around number 10 and I'm going to load my brush up with water then dip straight into the cobalt blue and I'm going to work in a circular motion so you can see that I'm working just little circles on the paper this helps to create really nice clouds if you hold your brush down on the paper then it stops that paint moving too much and exploding outwards so it's going to get a really nice cloud effect. So I'm dipping, dipping my brush in water, loading it back up. Dip my brush in water, load it back up. Come down to the land. Just going to sweep along with the brush, steady as I can. I've got that nice blue on the horizon as well. So just make sure your clouds don't look too patterned break them up in places just breaking through in places and give my brush a little bit of a rinse I'm going to load it up again I'm just dab into a little bit of the rose so the rose isn't I've not taken a lot on I just want it to darken some of the blue in places so it just gives a nice tone so you can see that rose appearing just towards the top and then we're going to sweep some through at the bottom as well. Along that sort of horizon line. And get a bit of a variety of colour happening. You want it to look too stripey. So make sure you give it a little bit of a blend on that horizon line. Okay, so then I'm going to come down to the foreground. When that can be drying nicely, the sky, it's settling nicely. We're going to get a layer of wetting wet on here. So this is my wash brush. I'm taking on some water. Make sure my round number 10 is clean. Dip into some water. And then I'm going to dip into some raw sienna. So the raw sienna is basically going to go where the paths are. So there's a few little paths that are trodden in. I just want to make sure that they're there. You can take a few little bits of the raw sienna through because it will give a little bit more synergy into the painting. Okay, I've got some gamboge yellow here. I'm going to dab into that, dab into a little bit of water, dab into a little bit of green. What I'm looking for is sort of a grass green colour. Then 
and I'm going to start to come in that's a little bit light so I want a little bit more of a dab of blue in just take it bit by bit because this is quite heathery I'm going to leave gaps so I'm coming on in a little sort of arching motion coming up to the pathways up to the land, up to the sea but I'm leaving little gaps because I want to fill those in with some purple heather come along this line here and again I'm just leaving some little gaps can I brush a really good rinse okay load it up I'm gonna dab into I'm gonna pop it here a little bit of the rose and a little bit of the blue so I'm looking for a purple color we have some purple heather And just bring that in it's quite a muted purple that's absolutely fine Don't want to be too strong it's quite it's on the bluey more it's more bluey and then it's going to mix a little bit with the green which is going to make it more muted so we're just filling in the gaps with this purple heather color give that brush a little bit of a rinse out I'm going to swap down to a number six and you've got to be a bit careful not to touch the wet bits you can always dry them in between but I'm going to come on with a little bit of water onto the building and I'm going to dab into some burnt sienna I'm just coating over the whole of the building leave those little gaps where you can see the the see-through I'm going to dab into a little bit of cobalt blue now so this mixed with the burnt sienna on the paper should start to make a grey it's quite nice to mix on the paper because you get different tones happening so I've got a little bit of places it's a bit more blue places it's a bit more grey places it's a bit more brown but it's a really nice effect okay I'm going to dry that off okay so that's nicely dry now so I'm going to come into this I've got a couple of little bits of distant land so I'm going to come into those now so that's a little bit of water from around number six I'm then going to come on with the cobalt blue so any sky colour will always help with distant land if it's closer to the sky colour it works really well I'm going to pop that in and I'm just letting it flow really following the line of the land I've rinsed my brush off dabbed it off a little bit I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of the burnt sienna so in that same way as we made the grey there we're going to make the grey bits of grey appear so if you start in this left hand corner because this is closer it can be warmer so a little bit of burnt sienna in that bit and we're just blending it through to make areas of grey areas of brown and then as I come further down I'm just blending what's on the brush 
and it looks much more muted so it gives a really really nice effect and let that settle and I'm going to come on to this foreground now I'm going to use the sponge and the green that we've mixed so you're going to wet the sponge wring it out really well and dab it off so that you've hardly got any moisture in there and then I'm going to squeeze it to a point and pick up some of the green paint so I've got a little bit on the brush on the sponge and then I can start to dab in because these are smaller areas I don't want to use the whole sponge so I'm going to be quite careful on how I'm dabbing in here so this is building up some texture in this foreground section so every time I'm dabbing down I'm changing the angle of the sponge a little bit so that it doesn't form a pattern I don't want it to form a pattern and you can overlap the purple bits a little bit it does work to do that so that it doesn't end up stripy so you've got that lovely texture there I'm going to rinse that sponge out dab out again and then I need some purple so I'm just going to clean that well off because I've finished with that green take my round number 10 load the brush up dab into some of the rows so there's not a huge amount of water in there it's only what the round number 10's picked up again dab in dab into a bit of the blue and take that across so there's basically two dabs of water and two dabs of paint in there it's a milky consistency I'll show you the colour it's still fairly pale okay I'm going to rinse my brush out pop that down pick up the sponge again looking for those bobbly bits squeezing it I'm going to pick up some of the paint and dab that on so this is going to create the heather if you want to go more vibrant you can add a bit more rose into the mix we're going to keep this nice and muted and just remember to keep changing the direction of your sponge so that you don't form a pattern blend a little bit into the green as well don't just stick to that one area it's nice to get that that blend through so they don't look stripey you can do a little bit over your path if it gets too wet you need to dry it off if it starts to look blobby it's quite a delicate process doing sponging you can see you've got some really nice texture there now okay so that's dry so if I just then wet this little bit here because this is another bit of land I'm going to take some burnt sienna so the first time I took cobalt blue on this time I'm taking burnt sienna first now that's going to make it a lot warmer and then I'm going to add the cobalt blue so I've rinsed my brush out dabbed it off just a little bit and then I'm going to take some of this cobalt blue in so this is another bit of distant land but it's going to have a warmer feel because I've started with one colour and then added a bit of the other whilst I've still got that grey mix on the brush I can come in and help to, help to define, I've just dabbed into both the edges of this a little bit more so I'm just getting that left hand edge on the chimney 
on the side of the ruin and on that side here. It's just going to add a little bit of shadow. And a little bit more definition. If you rinse your brush off, dab it off so it's not too wet and you can just soften that in. So I'm just touching the side where the paint is coming to and just softening that in a little bit. So that just gives that a little bit more definition. Okay, I'll dry that off and then we'll do the water. Okay, so that's nicely dry now. Uh, I'm going to show you a different technique to get that glistening water now. So I've got a round number 10. In, previously I've used a bit of candle wax to show you how to do glistening water. This is just going on to dry. So this is a flat brush. I've loaded it with water and then I'm going to pop on some of the blue paint. So I'm just coming into this area and take a little bit of that blue off because it's a bit strong and then load my brush with water and I'm just going to extend it out horizontally. So the brush is horizontal and I'm moving this paint now. You can just keep coming through it and this is on to dry. I'm just moving this paint through. Come all the way to the horizon line, trying to keep it as straight as you can. It's quite nice at the bottom of cliffs to have a little bit of white showing. It gives a bit of a, a glistening water breaking effect. And then you can just come through the little arches just with your brush and then you just a horizontal stroke and you're not going to put too much there. So this is all I'm working with what I've got off the paper here. Horizontal stroke and I'm leaving a lot of light. I want that light to be glistening. Okay, and there we go. This is Wheel Coats and St Agnes in Cornwall. Um, lots of lovely effects and really nice glistering, glistening water there. The ruin of the tin mine, the, the beautiful sky in the heather in the foreground.